Folks, that's not all I got. From that one beef tenderloin, I got eight steaks and plenty of meat left over that I'm going to be using to make the best tasting hamburgers on the planet. Howdy folks, and welcome to Texas Cooking Today. It is a beautiful day on this lovely morning in the heart of Dallas, Texas. That's what you're seeing behind me, downtown Dallas. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you a fantastic recipe. This is good food, and I'll tell you what, if you don't get all of the information that you're looking for on this video, the next one's a tutorial that goes into all of the technique about how to pull off the video recipe that you're watching today. Thank you for watching. Now let's, let's get in the kitchen and make this. Come on. Today, I'm going to show you a few things about the beef tenderloin. Now, I might discuss a little bit some of the different names and components of this as well, but primarily what I'm here to show you today is just a quick breakdown of this cut and what to do with the different muscles, how to separate them, and how to handle this without really tearing up the meat. It's not a hard thing to do, folks, and once you've tried it, you'll think, hey, I should have been willing to do this a long time ago. It's easy. First thing, we need to get it out of the package, get it dried off. So I'm going to do that real quick. And once I have it on my cutting board, we're going to get busy cutting it up. This is how to prep a beef tenderloin. Let's get at it. Come on. Okay, folks, I have this out of its package and it's all kind of opened up here. Now there's a couple of different parts about this that I wanted to mention to you before we get on to anything else. First of all, this little end here, as I mentioned to you, uh, this needs to be known as what's called the mignon. So everything that's pretty much from here down this way to this point where it's really thin and dainty, that is your mignon. And you can see where it gets thin underneath here, and that's right at this point. So this piece here, we cut and make that a separate steak all on its own. You can invert it, turn it uh, vertical, and it does well that way once it's mashed and formed into place as a steak. Up here is the head meat, and that starts where this piece, this separate muscle right here, folds over, okay? And this is a really good muscle, guys, and do not underestimate this. This is considered to be one of the very best cuts in the cow, and most top chefs will not serve this as a general item to the public. They save it back for their best customers, only the best uh, will get that head meat cut. If you're lucky, a chef will allow you the head meat, you know, if, if uh, so it never hurts to ask, but most of the time they'll say it's not available. What you'll normally get in a fillet is gonna be a center cut, which is from here to here in this part of this cut. Underneath this fat, we have a beautiful layer of what's called silver skin. Let me get that out of the way. That stuff right there. So I've got to get that out of contact with the meat, um, and that way we don't have that nastiness going on. That's it's very stringy, gristly, sinewy. Don't you don't want that in your meat at all. There's also another muscle on this, and we're going to open that up here in just a moment and separate them out. Um, and <sighs> It's this over here, and that's really where it kind of connects off to the rest of the cow, where it hooks up to that rib, and you can see the ribs right there. And there are even some bad cuts here from the, the packing house where they were separating this, and the man was going too fast, and he cut a little deep on his cuts, like this, this, and this. So it was kind of a, a lousy job at the packing house what they did there. So we're going to get into separating this, come around to this other side, and we'll take a look at it from over there. Okay, folks, we have, as I mentioned before, different sections of this meat, and we're going to process this out into all of its different components, okay? And that way we can cut our fillets, or we can do a modern Chateaubriand, or we can do one of the old-fashioned Chateaubriands, which was a, a bit smaller and prepared more like a modern fillet. Okay, so let's take a look. Turn this over here. We can see a little bit of rough butchering going on here from the packing plant, unfortunately. And sometimes you're just gonna have that happen, guys. It's going to happen, so be kind of prepared for it. There is a part at which this tapered muscle 
gets a little bit thicker and it happens usually about mm, four to six inches in from the very tip here so from here up to about here that is where I have that little uh, piece of meat there which we call the mignon so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that guy right now okay there's my mignon and I'll deal with it in a moment there's some neat stuff that you can do to shake this into a wonderful steak and I'll show you that here in just a second now you might be thinking hang on why did you go ahead and remove that instead of doing all the other processing first watch pay attention guys when I'm processing a piece of meat you've ever noticed from the way I do my cooking show I will usually break it down into its constituent muscles first okay so as you see what I've done here is I've actually separated part of the head meat this piece up here from the rest of my muscle which is a separate muscle here so you have two different muscles kind of joining it together as one right up here so you see where this silver skin kind of runs up underneath there pull it back with my fingers a little more that's where we're headed with this okay so just kind of follow the silver skin and separate that head meat from it okay all right so look what i have hanging on here done okay right there i have my head meat it's one of my favorite little parts now we have a lot of silver skin on this side so this gives us a good chance to really kind of teach how to get silver skin off of there. Silver skin's a kind of a pain in the rear. And on some cuts of meat, you can actually take your silver skin and just pull it straight from the meat. However, when you have a cut of meat that is very tender, the way this cut of meat is, it's not so easy to do that. Now what I want to do first is remove some of the outer fat from the silver skin. I'm going to reach under here and pull this up. Now you're going to notice when you do this, if you've got this part on yours, like I have it on mine, that this is going to separate out into, again, two separate muscles. And it was the one I mentioned earlier over on this side right here. That is a good piece of meat, folks. Do not, do not throw this away. If you see, I'm pulling it apart, but I started to tear the meat underneath. So I don't want to pull any more than absolutely necessary. Once I get to a certain point, if it doesn't want to come apart, just very gently run your knife lengthwise right along the piece you're trying to save, which is this one. Okay, so there I go cutting that away from what I'm wanting. See there? Now up here at this point, we have another point now, we separate these two. Just that easy. We'll start right here on the edge, very gently, just kind of lifting and pushing in a rotating manner. I want to work my knife underneath that silver skin, lifting it up off of that meat to that other side. There we go. I'm just going to cut that off. There we are. I'm going to start with that first little string that I cut loose. Now when I'm doing this, folks, I don't run my knife straight into it. I take my blade and I turn it upwards like this just slightly not as much as you just saw me do but I just just slightly and that way it cuts towards the silver skin which is very sinewy and it's kind of hard to cut through that stuff but it helps you to not get too much meat into what you're working with there so grab a hold of that silver skin pull and there we go take this off See how I keep that blade turned slightly up? Now let's take a look at what I did here. I'm going to turn this guy over. What very tiny amount of meat is on that isn't really a serious sacrifice. And you can see how this technique works really well to remove silver skin. The larger portion there has been worked out. Now I've got this little tip left. I'm going to take that and remove him right where he becomes about an inch in diameter. All right, again, I'm not gonna throw it away. That's a very good cut of meat. I'm gonna use it. Okay, we have that mignon. Let's pull him back out. I just want to clean up my mignon a little bit. There's a, another deep cut right here where they got a bit rough at the uh, packing plant. But if you'll notice on this tip, look at all of this 
extra fat going on here, this, this loose fat. It's very soft and gentle. This is part of the chine that we removed. So this part is your actual mignon. And if you notice on this one, it is so very dainty. Now it can be pressed, and that's normally what they do is they'll press them from the tip down, forming them, and you get something of a steak out of that. And sometimes, to hold these together, they'll wrap it with bacon and uh, do a little filet that way with it. Okay, but that right there, that is, believe it or not, <laughs> the mignon. Now this right here, part of this one, is what I'm gonna be grinding in a little while, because I'm gonna enjoy some very special hamburgers. Oh yes. But I want to clean up the rest of this because I'm not going to grind all of that. Look at that nastiness, folks. Come on. That's just, that isn't cool at all. So what I need to do is remove the meat from this mess. There we go. So, I've got some easier to handle pieces here that are actually, at this point, ready to hit the grinder itself. This one needs a little more cleaning, but not much. So here, I have meat for the grinder. All right, when it comes to that head meat piece, now here's a little tip that I cut off earlier. When it comes to this, what we're gonna do is just square up these ends a little bit. So I'm taking that off, giving myself a nice square end on that. And I'm gonna do the same on this, but I wanna come back about two inches, all right? That's gonna give me a good fillet. If I want a really big fillet, I'll just do this and I have about two and a half inches. There we go. There is your head meat fillet, guys. Does not get better than that when it comes to which cut to ask for. I'll be looking forward to enjoying that in just a little bit. Now the bottom of this, if you wanna clean this thing up a little bit and remove some of that heavier uh, outer fat, you can do that. Me, I don't like to take off too much myself because I'm one of those guys that likes the flavor of that fat, so I like to leave as much of it as I can. When it comes to cutting a fillet, an old-fashioned fillet 200 years ago would have been a one-inch cut, so I'd have been cutting here, and then here, and then here, and here, and here, and then came along um, a gentleman who prepared a steak for an ambassador to England. It was the French ambassador to England. His name was uh, Chateau Briand, and uh, he was the guy that the dish was named after. And what it was it was just a double thick cut of a fillet. So it's a two inch thick fillet rather than one inch, and that became known as Chateau Briand, what was named as Chateau Briand. Then over a period of time that kind of got changed to where people will take this whole center cut or a portion of it, usually an eight inch or seven to eight inch portion of it, and then use that center cut for their Chateaubriand by pan searing off the whole outside then finishing it off under a broiler. It's a great way of doing it, but it does show how things do change over time. Now let's take a look at this. I'm gonna cut some nice, thick, Looky there. That right there, ladies and gentlemen. It's the old fashioned Chateaubriand. That. Now, nice. I have one here, a little bit smaller steak. Very good sized steaks there. So what I want to be doing is placing all of those trimmings that I didn't use into my grinder and making a top quality grind. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Folks, whether it be a manual meat grinder or an electric one, once you do your own grind, you're never going to go back to anything else. That's the best, and it's so delicate and soft. This makes for good dishes. Well, I have finished my work. I have eight of these wonderful steaks, okay? I have 
the um, the mignon over in another location and I'll have all of these center cuts and the head meat right here on this plate. Folks, that's eight steaks and some extra meat that I'm going to be able to grind into wonderful burgers and it was $60, all right? Normally fillets like this, well, that's a pretty pricey bargain. You know, most places that's going to be $12 to $15 per fillet for a good quality choice beef Angus fillet like this. All right, so when you're talking good beef, it's going to be pricey. When you do your own processing, you save the extra labor cost. Don't be afraid to give this a try, and please enjoy your holidays. Folks, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. That is what everybody should be enjoying on this day. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you for watching this show. And if you didn't get the information you were looking for on this video, the very next episode, that's a full-on tutorial to what we just saw today. It's going to teach you the techniques and everything that you need to know. And I usually go into a little history and background on the recipes there too. I'd like to say thanks for watching. And folks, you have a good day. Bye-bye.